we just gave the definition of a degree of a vector field at a critical point of that vector field. So let's give a couple of examples, and we'll start off with some simple examples, examples that come from linear vector fields. And not only do we look at um, linear vector fields, but specifically vector fields of the form alpha x, beta y, where alpha and beta are non-zero numbers. In this situation, there's sort of only a couple of uh, vector fields that uh, we could look at. And we'll begin with the first type, which is where alpha and beta are the same. And in fact, they're both positive. So in this case, our vector field looks like a source. And to calculate the degree, so first of all, there's only a single critical point, And it's isolated, and it's exactly at the origin. And what we have to do is, uh, because there's just one single critical point, we can choose any epsilon neighborhood around that point. So let's just choose epsilon to be 1. And in this case, this epsilon neighborhood, we get the unit circle. And the Gauss map, the map associated to this, uh, for which we want to take the degree of that function to arrive at the index, tells us that at every point here, we associate we normalize the vector at that point, and then we map that to, the, to S1 itself. So in this case, the vector, for instance, let's say at 1, 0, is exactly the vector 1, 0. The vector at 0, 1 is also 0, 1. So you see that after looking at all the points on this unit circle, we actually get the identity map. And the identity map, if we wanted to write it as a matrix, because it actually is a linear transformation from R2 to R2, it's this linear transformation restricted to S1. And so the differential of this map is exactly this matrix itself. And because of that, all we have to do is calculate where uh, the unit vector goes for instance, at any point, because every point is a regular point of this function. So if we look at the unit vector, let's say uh, at 1, 0, and the unit vector, remember, is giving us an orientation on the unit circle, and we think of the orientation as um, going around counterclockwise. So at 1, 0, the differential of this is just this matrix, and therefore it fixes every single vector. So this unit vector here gets sent to exactly that same unit vector. And so the index of this vector field v at 0 is just 1. And we could do something similar where all of these constants are reversed. So if alpha equals beta equals negative 1, what happens in that case? All of these arrows get turned inside. So now that source becomes a sink. And then we can look at the unit vec the unit sphere in around the critical point here. And then we ask, OK, where do the points on this unit circle get mapped to for this standard unit circle? And if we look at 1, 0, the point all the way on the right, the vector points to the left. So 1, 0 gets sent to negative 1, 0. So let me draw this by starting out. Here is where the point 1, 0 goes. And let me draw out by going along counterclockwise along this circle what the image is of all those points going along this circle. If we start at 1, 0, we know that we go to negative 1, 0. And then as we move along in the first quadrant counterclockwise, we end up at negative, sorry, 0, negative 1. So that means that we're going counterclockwise also so let me draw this here with one finger here. As we move along this circle, we're going in this direction. And then when we reach the top here, we reach the bottom point along this circle. We keep on moving. And you can confirm that these vectors at these points are indeed going along the circle in this manner. And we keep going, we keep going. And what we're doing is we're essentially going around the unit circle. It's just that we started at a different point. So all we did was we actually just rotated by 
pi radians. And a rotation by pi radians is exactly just negative the identity matrix. So we can calculate what the degree of this map is. So the differential is, again, this matrix because it's a linear transformation. And then we look at what happens to the vector here. This transformation is now no longer going to fix that point. It's going to move the point here. And what we have to check is where this vector gets sent. So this vector is the vector 0, 1. And this is at the point 1, 0. And what we should get is another vector, but this time at the point negative 0, 1. Negative 1, 0, sorry. Negative 1, 0. And if I just apply this matrix, I get 0, negative 1. Does this coincide with the orientation that we have from the standard unit circle in its orientation? Yes, because the vector at negative 1, 0 does indeed point down, which is uh, parallel to this vector. So these two, so in, as a result, the index of this vector field is also 1. And again, every point is a regular point. Now we can take what happens if one of these numbers flip. Let's say we take alpha equals 1 and beta equals negative 1. This time, we sort of have half source, half sink. So we have a flow that goes out along the x-axis. And then we have something that flows in along the y-axis. If I wanted to draw the trajectory lines, they would look something like that, and so on. So now we look at the critical point here. Again, all the critical points are at the origin. And we have to look at what the associated function is to the unit circle. So let's start off at the right side. At the right side, the point 1, 0 doesn't move. So it's fixed under this transformation. But as I go counterclockwise here, in this case, I'm going down. So this vector actually, so the vector 0, 1 gets sent to the vector 0, negative 1. As I'm traversing counterclockwise, I'm actually going counterclockwise here along this unit circle. And then if I keep going, I see that once I reach negative, negative 1, 0, I'm still at negative 1, 0. And you keep going, keep going, and then you reach the top here at the point 0, negative 1, I get sent to 0, comma, 1. And you keep going and you keep going. So we're actually going counterclockwise along this circle now. And the associated, um, again, we can actually write this as a linear transformation, again, when we restrict to the unit circle. Um, I'm not saying anything about whether this transformation is what it is on the entire plane R2, but when you restrict to the unit circle, you can describe it by this function. So in this case, what happens is, is that we're leaving the x-coordinates fixed, and we're flipping the y-coordinates. So in this case, we can uh, describe the, the function on the unit circle as given by this, the restriction of this linear transformation on R2. And so we look at what happens to the unit vector 0, 1 at the point 1, 0. Under this transformation, by the way, this point gets fixed under this transformation, and it is a regular point. And what happens is it gets sent to 0, negative 1. Now, 0, negative 1, again, these are both at the same point now. These two vectors are completely opposite in direction, and so the orientation is different. So it's orientation reversing. The previous two were orientation preserving. And this implies that the index of the vector v at 0 is negative 1. And a similar calculation shows that when alpha equals negative 1 and beta equals 1, we get the same thing. But the picture might look, perhaps, a little bit different. And so these are some simple examples of uh, vector fields, degrees, and indices, um, and how to calculate them. You might also ask, well, this is just a simple example of a linear vector field. There are also many other different examples of vector fields, such as the vector field that sort of cycles and rotates all the points.
and maybe gets larger as you go further out from the origin. Or maybe you might have some sort of a spiral that you travel into a particular point. So as you go in, it's probably easier for me to draw the actual, um, the actual integral curves. It might look something like this, where the vectors are dictating that the integral curves spiral towards the center in a counterclockwise manner. You can calculate vector. You can calculate the degrees, the indices of all of these vector fields as well. You can also calculate them for many non-linear vector fields too.